The stock market is at an inflection point. Is it going to continue to go up, which it has for about five months, or is it going to turn around and go down? Last week, the Fed held interest rates constant. It's called a pause. You probably know that. And I'm going to look at two sides of this. Three people, experts, who, let's say, economists, money managers, who believe that uh, the Fed should do nothing, leave it alone, it's okay. Which tells you, the, the rationale is, that it is probably the economy is in good shape. Therefore, probably, not always, but probably, the stock market is in pretty good shape setting the stage for probably some kind of an increase from here. The other one I'm going to play is someone who makes the case for the fact that not only is the market going down, but we are being set up for a crash, a significant crash in the coming months. I'll just say two or three or more. but. You could say even second or third quarter. Uh, so two very different views and both make the case for why their view is valid. Hi, I'm Ben Repond. Welcome to my YouTube broadcast. Today is April 9th, 2024. As I said, I'm going to play three pieces. They're short pieces, uh, maybe about a minute or so each, maybe one or two minutes and from experts who will tell you that they believe the economy is in good shape, the Fed has done what it needs to do, and should not be reducing rates from here. As a matter of fact, if they do reduce rates, it sets the market up for, uh, and the economy uh, for danger. So, and then I'll play one with the alternative view, an extreme alternative view. But I want you to hear both because in all cases, I think they make a strong case for their position. So I'm going to begin with an interview that Joe Kernan does with Steve Eisman. Steve Eisman is the portfolio manager for Newberger Berman, and he was also uh, a trader in the big short. So uh, he makes a case for the Fed to sit tight. And he's a very experienced, very excellent professional. And he says, do nothing. Just let it work of where it is right now. Until the economy gets worse, then cut rates. That makes total sense to me, and I agree with his position for his reasoning. So take a listen to Joe Kernan and Steve Eisman. Joining us now with this view on the Fed and the central bank's uh, market impact, Steve Eisman, a senior portfolio manager at Newberger Berman. And we've had you on enough that, that I, I, I'm always a little bit hesitant to try to ask you for big picture, top down analysis, because a lot of times you, you don't really want to want to go there. I actually have an opinion on this one. Good. You have an opinion on this, but I'll just start by, by saying we're, we're in kind of an, uh, an interesting environment where we're definitely worried that the economy, for Fed reasons and for Fed cut reasons, we're worried that the economy is staying strong and that inflation. I think it's more than staying strong. It's actually, I think it's there's been a reacceleration. But we're also worried right. that there's going to be a recession because the Fed is going to have to engender one. To tame it. So we're worried about the economy is too strong and there might be a recession. So, it's, so everybody's it's, hoping for a little bear's porridge. Exactly. Right. Something just right. Because right. we're worried. And, and has that ever happened? Can we really orchestrate that? Yeah, we have it right now. Everybody should just relax. <laughs> so that, is, that, is that your view right no, now? No, my, my view is um, I feel that ever since Greenspan was in charge of the Fed, the Fed has always been extremely insensitive to its own impact on markets. And, you know, when Powell said, was it last, I think it was last week, it feels like an eternity ago, that financial conditions are tight, I was like, what planet are you on? So, I mean, my view is the economy is fine. There should be, I personally think there should be no Fed cuts this year. And, you know, the market will do whatever the market does, but the economy is fine. And why would you cut, you know, my, my actual fear is that if the Fed were actually to cut rates, 
the market goes into, so it becomes, I guess, bubblicious. And then, and then we have a real problem. So, you know, things are good. The, the Fed should do nothing and, 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 and wait for data to get weak. Because we, there's no weak data. We, the next piece, short piece, is uh, Andrew Sorkin is interviewing uh, Roger Ferguson, who's the former vice chair of the Federal Reserve. Um, he makes the case, similarly, that probably uh, there, there may not be a need for a cut. There may not be any cuts this year. He gives it a 10 to 15% chance when he's pinned down. And, um, and if there is gonna be um, a cut, uh, maybe two of them, maybe three, depends on the data. Everybody gives themselves an out with, you know, depends on the data and that makes sense. So, but he's uh, always a voice of reason and has good rationale for his thinking. So take a listen to Andrew Sorkin and Roger Ferguson. The key inflation gauge, the PCE price index, rising in line with expectations last Friday. Our next guest says that the market should temper expectations of three rate cuts this year and possibly even give small odds to the less likely but not impossible notion of no cut at all. I want to bring in Roger Ferguson, Fed Vice Chair and a CNBC contributor. Let's go straight to the idea of no cut at all. What do you think the... The true odds of no cut at all are, Roger, because the market does not have that baked into their cake. Well, look, right now, I think the true odds are low, call it 10 to 15 percent, but not zero. Uh, and the reason is that inflation has, for a couple of months, remained a little higher than one might have hoped. I'd describe it as firmer. Um, you know, Chair Powell, over the weekend, having seen the incoming data, was clear that the three-cut um, dot plot is conditional on the data uh, playing out as expected. Uh, and so I think right now it's um, this is, it's really much a wait and see. Right. The Fed's in no rush to cut, and the data may be firmer, and they may not cut. We'll see. And the third piece I'm going to play, again, just a short piece, uh, Joe Kernan, again, is interviewing Ed Yardini, um, and he makes the case for uh, that he doesn't expect the Fed to lower rates uh, this year, and he says, leave it alone. It's okay. He's He's been more on that side of, don't be too aggressive. Just make the cuts that they've made to deal with inflation and let the economy absorb that, let it work itself out, and probably also the stock market. That uh, seems to have been the case. Um, so he says, basically, leave it alone. So here you have three views. Edgar Denny, uh, Steve Eisman, and Roger Ferguson, all saying kind of the same thing. We don't need more rate cuts, uh, and we probably won't get them. So uh, that's different. So if you go back, um, what, a few months ago, uh, two, three, four months ago, they were talking about five to seven rate cuts, and the market is not buying that. So again, if the, mar you know, the economy gets worse, that's when you cut rates, uh, not when things are clicking along okay. Let's talk markets uh, and the Fed now with Ed Yardeni, president of Yardeni Research. And we, we've been talking about a, a Nick Timoros piece, uh, Ed, about whether we do get cuts this year. Uh, I, Ron, I think about two weeks ago, I, I think at that point, you, you weren't completely sure either about how many or when right. they come. It, 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 we've seen a couple of inflation data points since then. What, what's your latest uh, on that? We see something in June or July yeah. or June or July? Yeah, I've, yeah, Joe, I've been in the uh, fewer and later camp on the federal funds rate cutting. Um, I never really understood at the beginning of the year why the market seemed to be thinking five, six, seven cuts. I was thinking that uh, we should just stick with what Fed officials were talking about, which was two to three. Uh, but over the past few weeks, I've had my my doubts about two to three, not just uh, this past week when we saw hotter than expected inflation. It's just the economy is doing quite well and inflation, I think, is still moderating. So uh, my mantra is why mess with success? Uh, there's really no need for the Fed to, to, to lower interest rates. Now I'm going to give you, this piece is going to be about five minutes, but I think it's very, uh, I think it's very um, good rationale. And, and it's the case for, and I don't want to scare you with this, because this, 
guy, his name, he's a blogger, and his name is Chris Vermeulen. And he's just a blogger. And he's being interviewed by um, a firm in Toronto. And uh, he makes the case for the fact that the market, and, and I think a good case for the fact that the market is going to crash and it's going to crash this year. Now, I don't personally believe that, but I want you to hear this point of view and hear the thinking because there are people who do believe this of what's behind it. And I think he makes as good a case as anyone could make for that. The message I take away and the thing I want to say to you is this is going to happen. I think his timetable is not correct. That's my opinion. So <laughs> I could be proven wrong, right? But I think uh, it will happen at some point. The market has gone for an extended period of time, up and up and up. Yes, it's had a couple of correction periods, but not really a cr what I'd call a crash. And so it, it's in an, and he, he will say it's in an elevated place. And when it gets that elevated and sucks in, you know, the last investors, uh, that's when the down cycle begins. Uh, but I, the message I think we should take away, you and I, is that be prepared. This is going to happen at some point. If you believe in cycles, then the market will go up, go up for an extended period of time, and then it gets overbought and a credit event happens or something triggers it and it collapses. And um, so uh, whatever your method is of investing, whatever your, hopefully you have some kind of defensive method in place. There's offense and defense. Offense is when you make money and defense is when you protect your money. There's a lot of different ways to do it. We have a particular way that we do it, but uh, hopefully you will take away the fact that you need some kind of method uh, that you believe in to protect your money during that kind of a period of time. Because I do believe it's gonna happen. I don't, I'm reluctant to put time frames on it, uh, <coughs> but I think that is an important uh, takeaway. So anyway, listen to this interview. Um, uh, with uh, Christopher Mullen making the case for um, a 50% decline from here. Hi, Chris. Thank you very much for joining us today. I recently saw an interview that you gave and you, I was really intrigued by your comments where you said the market's gonna rally up until May or June timeframe, and then you expect a serious correction in the stock market. I believe you said as much as 50%. So I wanna start right here and tell us what you think about the stock market, more specifically the S&P and the NASDAQ. What are your views? Sure, yeah, well, there's a lot of layers to that to come to that conclusion. And um, uh, well, thanks for having me on the show, always a pleasure. Um, anyways, if we jump onto the charts, I can show you my view of the major indexes here of what, uh, what I'm looking at when it comes to the SP 500 and the NASDAQ. Now, um, I, I used to like to start off with just talking about the, the, the four stages of the market. So Stan Weinstein wrote a book talking about the four stages and if people understand, so I'm a technical trader, I follow price action, uh, that's how investors make money. We want price or the asset to move in the direction we're positioned for. Uh, so I don't factor in any news or any economic data or the Fed. Nothing of the, nothing really comes into play here. So if you look at the markets from a price standpoint, there's four stages. Everybody loves a stage two, which is a bull market. That's an advancing stage. And we can make a ton of money in a stage four decline, which is a bear market. Both of those trends are green because there's strong trends and we can profit from those. Now, the difficult times in the market are stage three topping phases, which is what we're in right now in a stage one base. So if we were to just focus on the stage three topping pattern right here, you'll notice you'll have stocks have this massive run up and eventually they have a sharp crack to the downside. And then they go into this sideways phase, this complacency move. And typically what happens during this phase is a lot of the average investor starts to think that, you know, the bear market has taken place, which would be equivalent to 2022. We saw that 24% correction, correction in the market. 
and people think the bear market is over. Uh, but really, we're just in this complacency mode. And if we were to look at the emotions of the investor, they think the market's cooling off. And right now, we're seeing this, the SP500, the NASDAQ, as you mentioned, James, hitting new all-time highs. And it's sucking everybody into the market who thinks we're really starting a new massive bull market that could last many years. And so it's this pattern, this crack to the downside, and this consolidation is a, is a big warning sign. But we are seeing the indexes hit new highs, which confuses people. And the best way to show you this is if we were to just look at the longer term picture, we'll go to the weekly chart of the SP 500. As we can see here, the SP 500 is hitting new highs, but that is driven by the handful of big tech companies. Uh, if we look at the NASDAQ, it's the same thing. We're just driving up. We got the AI push, the NVIDIA push, the, the semiconductor space doing all the heavy lifting. Now, if we were to look at just the SP 500 with equal weighting, so all stocks are worth this, have the same value or weighting in the portfolio, you can see we are coming up to a major double top. We had the big correction in, in 2022. We're now in this complacency stage and we're set up for a, a double top. And we might even pierce to a nominal new high on this equal weighted uh, basket or, or index weighting. Uh, just like we did in 2008, we saw a similar price come up on the SP 500, poked to a new high, and then sold off 54%. So this gives us a good idea of what the majority of stocks are doing if you if you get rid of uh, the big tech heavyweights. The other part of this market that really makes this interesting is the Russell 2000, which really is the majority of the stocks. This is thousands of stocks, and you can see they've had they the big crack to the downside. Now they're in this sideways complacency move. They've, they've had a nice run recently, but they are nowhere near their highs. And so if you look at the equal weighted SP 500 and the Russell 2000 blended together, you can see in general, we have this stage three topping phase. And, and this is what the market does best. It gets headline news with the NASDAQ, the SP 500, both hitting all time highs. NVIDIA has got this feeding frenzy in technology and semiconductors. People I know, who have never been in the stock market right now are, are downloading apps and they're buying NVIDIA on their phones and they don't know anything about the markets. I remember when this was happening during uh, Bitcoin, right when it topped many, many years ago. Uh, so this is like the feeding frenzy of the market, sucking people in before we go off this cliff. And th this is the, the mental state that people are gonna go through. We're gonna start to break down, I think, late this year. People are gonna go into anxiety and eventually they go through this whole emotional roller coaster. They're going to be in denial how much they've lost. And then they're going to be in a panic stage because they can't sell out. But eventually they'll hit this, this euphoric phase where they can't take it anymore. So this is kind of the, the way we're going to be going and very painful for investors. And um, that's, that's where I see the broad markets in general, um, kind of at, from that big picture view. Okay. Well, today... I said today is the 9th of April. Actually, the recording is taking place on the 8th of April, Monday. And we publish it on uh, Tuesday, the 9th. We're recording it in the morning, mountain time. And the eclipse has not yet occurred. It will occur. It's a, uh, an astronomical type event and it's going to be amazing to all of us to see this or see pictures of this and there are people and i think that's just amazing actually there are people who have connected a lot of dots over the last couple of hundred years maybe more that have said and concluded that when this happens around this time um cataclysmic things happen to the economy or to the stock market. And I have read some of those. Uh, matter of fact, there are people who can connect every one of them and say, going back quite a ways, and say every time it's, ha every time it's happened, within a few months, I'll say three months, sometimes a few weeks, sometimes a few months, something really bad happens. Well, I don't know about that. I don't... <laughs> I don't know if that, I, I'm not smart enough to connect those dots, but uh, it again, it says to me 
that whatever your method is of having defense in place in your portfolio, and you do need that, you, you will be glad you have it one day. But whatever your method is, be prepared. And whether it's due to this or due to earnings or due to the fact that we're in these cycles, as Christopher Mullen talked about, whatever it is, just think about it and be prepared. Thank you for watching. If you have questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below.